Well, I'm back on track for pumping out reviews, and this week I played through Vicious Cycle Games' latest arcade shooter, Earth Defense Force Insect Armageddon. Having not played through the previous titles in the series, I wasn't exactly sure what I was getting into, but for the most part, I was pleasantly surprised. I'm usually a little weary when a new title comes out that's $20 cheaper than the rest of the new releases from the get-go, so is Insect Armageddon worth your 40 bucks? Right from the very beginning, you can tell that Earth Defense Force is a pretty generic arcade shooter. The story is simple and vague. Alien insects have invaded Earth, and you, the alpha leader of Lightning Squad and the Earth Defense Force, have been sent to New Detroit to eliminate them. That's really about it. There are a few plot points that try to create some drama, but for the most part, they really don't. The way the developers chose to end the story is terrible, and what's worse is that you aren't even able to view, or rather, listen to it in its entirety unless you beat the game on the Insanity difficulty level. The voice acting is pretty good overall, considering it's only between three characters the entire time. You'll need to get close to it and plant a charge on it to take it out. Roger that. I will contact you again after you've completed your objective. There are also no cutscenes, which is a letdown as I think they could have really enhanced the story by showing the insects destroying the world cities. The graphics overall are pretty dated, especially the particle effects. But with a lower tier of graphics, you get no screen tearing and, for the most part, a smooth frame rate throughout the game's entirety. The campaign's 15 levels took me about 6 hours to complete on the normal difficulty. Insect Armageddon also supports two-player local split-screen, or you can take the game online and play it with two other friends. Once you've tackled the campaign, you and up to five online friends can test your wits on the survival mode, where you fend off waves of enemy aliens. I actually found this game mode to be pretty fun, but it likely will get repetitive quickly. Upon completing the campaign, a campaign remix mode is unlocked that adds a little variety to the missions you've already played, but I didn't really find that too interesting. You can also disable friendly bots to add a decent challenge for advanced players. This is definitely an arcade shooter at heart, as it's loaded with tons of enemies on the screen at a time, and it's super cheesy in that the aliens drop health upgrades and better weaponry. While the gameplay can get a bit repetitive at times, for the most part, it's quite fun. You get a bit of variety in the levels by taking on giant boss monsters and hopping into mechs, turrets, and tanks to wreak devastation on the hordes of insects. The environments are also completely destructible, which is pretty funny considering you're trying to defend the city, not completely obliterate it. There are four different classes to choose from in the campaign, each with different loadouts and abilities. The trooper is your standard soldier with low armor, fast speed, and a wide variety of weapons. The jet gains fast aerial movement at the cost of armor, while the tactical can take more of a beating while he deploys turrets and mines. Finally, the battle is your heavy armor, heavy weapons, slow moving tank. As you play the four classes, you'll gain experience, which will level them up, granting them access to new abilities, better stats, and more weaponry. In fact, there are over 300 weapons to unlock and collect, many of which are quite unique. Playing these soldiers with the default controls actually feels very natural, with slides, sprints, special moves, and even a reload system very similar to that found in Gears of War. Overall, there's some good replay value in Earth Defense Force Insect Armageddon, if you're an achievement whore. I don't find myself interested in going back into the game to unlock all the content, as you have to beat the game on every difficulty and find and collect a lot of weapons, which could take quite a while. This isn't a terrible game, and the pricing is lower than 60 bucks, which is a good start. If you're an arcade fan, I'd actually recommend this title to you, but for the small amount of content, I'd probably wait to pick it up in the bargain bin for 20 bucks or so. Check out the full write-up and screenshots over at ZeitgeistGameReview.com. Stay up to date by following me on Twitter and Facebook, and make sure to check out all of the other great gaming entertainment on the Game Station. Don't forget to subscribe and press the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching.